The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. The proclamation from the Holy Gospel according to St. Matthew. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus said to his disciples, Not everyone who says to me, Lord, Lord, will enter the kingdom of heaven but only the one who does the will of my Father in heaven. Many will say to me on that day, Lord, Lord, did we not prophesy in your name? Did we not drive out demons in your name? Did we not do mighty deeds in your name? Then I will declare to them solemnly, I never knew you. Depart from me, your evildoers. Everyone who listens to these words of mine and acts on them will be like a wise man who built his house on rock. The rain fell, the floods came, and the winds blew and buffeted the house. But it did not collapse. It had been set solidly on rock. And everyone who listens to these words of mine but does not act on them would be like a fool who built his house on sand. The rain fell, the floods came, and the winds blew and buffeted the house, and it collapsed and was completely ruined. When Jesus finished these words, the crowds were astonished at his teaching, for he taught them as one having authority and not as their scribes. Sisters and brothers, the gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. I was reflecting on the gospel reading of today and began to be frightened. Because if there is any phrase that the Lord has said once in his life that should make us very afraid, is the possibility that one day, he will look at us and say, I do not know you. Can you imagine this? We have been created in the image of God. We breathe his breath. Not only that, he made us his people. And in our baptism, in Jesus, we have been made the children of God. Jesus suffered and died a very cruel death in order to tell us we are so much loved. He is the shepherd who knows his sheep. They hear his voice. They recognize him. And on the day of judgment, he will look at us and say, I do not know you. Sa teenagers ngayon, translate natin. Titignan ka niya and he will say, Who you? That should be a very frightening experience when your very God, who knows you through and through, will declare, I do not know you. But worse, he will say, then go away because you are not worthy of my eternal kingdom. The people to whom Jesus was talking to they would say this, no, wait, 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 Lord, wait, Lord, wait. Did we not prophesy in your name? Did we not do great, wonderful miracles in your name? But the Lord will insist, I do not know you. You were not with me in those moments when you will be verified as Christians. The true character of a Christian will only be known. Not in moments of comfort and convenience. It will only be known in moments of difficulties and controversies. My dear friends, brothers and sisters, you are not going to be a Christian, Pope Francis would tell us, because you have a calling card that says, I am a Christian. Your very life has to speak of yourself as a Christian. Sabi nga ni Paul the sixth, another great 
Pope Saint. He said, the world does not need teachers. It has too many of them. What the world needs are witnesses, people who by their very lives teach, and they will only be good teachers if they teach by their lives. You know what? Of my many encounters when she was alive with Tita Karing, Tita Karidad, the one I could not forget was our first encounter. So Singh invited me to join them for, I think it was a dinner somewhere. And after we were, we have enjoyed the wonderful food, I was talking to so sing and discussing about something when suddenly a table away a woman spoke and she wanted to join and make her own comments and contributions in the discussion i looked at her and I said goodness sake this is impressive for i would later find out that she was almost a hundred then and she could hear our discussion a table away. She had not worn her glasses that day and she was fantastic the way she looked at her age and nobody then could believe that she was almost a hundred. Of course, the story would continue that when she reached her 100, everybody of the children and relatives were asked to come because it was a great, jubilee celebration and every year the invitation would be sent come this could be her last and just that went on and on up to the fifth year that when they finally asked everybody to come because this could be the last some people were beginning to ask sigurado ba kayo last na ba talaga yan caridad lived a long life more than just that, she lived an abundant life. Widowed at the age of 66, she would continue to care for her children and grandchildren. Five years later, at the age of 71, she decided, she decided to join the Order of St. Benedict. And then from then, and from then on, took on another responsibility the responsibility of being a catechist. Someone who would speak about the Lord. Someone who would teach about the Lord. Someone who would proclaim that he remains to be God of all and the source of every blessing. My dear friends, in the end, I will have to say this. It is not the length or the shortness of life of a person that really matters. It is whether in that short or long life, you have touched the lives of others and made them also to truly live. You know, ngayon ang tao, a life that is abundant because they have reached a certain level of wealth, of achievements. Caridad, when I saw her the first time, that petite lady, very demure, obviously a lady of class, would tell you there is something more to, to life than just these. Sabi nga nila, in the end our life find not by the wealth we have amassed, not by the position we have reached, not by the degrees we have achieved, by, but by what others have become because of us. Caridad understood that if she wants to make a life that is fully lived, she has to reach out and make known to others the Jesus she believed in. In our race to be great in life, we forget that greatness in life is not in how high you can jump over the others or how quickly you can overtake the rest or how fast you can reach the finish line but in the number of times you stop along the way to reach out to someone in need. Our Christianity will not be seen by membership in various charismatic groups. It will not be seen sa kalakihan ng krus 
na nakasukbit sa ating dibdib na mapapahiya ang krus ng kardinal ng Archdiocese ng Maynila sa laki. It is not in the the the, the of our Bibles or the number of statues and images we have in our homes. It is in just this. That my life is lived as a gift. And that even as I speak of a God that I love, this love of my God forces me, moves me to be in service. I'd like to quote Mother Teresa of Calcutta, India. Ang sabi niya, Love cannot remain by itself. It has no meaning. Love has to be put into action. And that action is service. Whatever form we are, able or disabled, rich or poor, it is not how much we do, but how much love we put in the doing. Caridad has truly been blessed with a long life. But the more the real miracle of her life is not that she did what she did, but that she was happy in doing what she did for others. Totoo, brothers and sisters, our life, they say, is like a game. It's a game of cards. Sometimes you win, sometimes you lose. But no matter what your cards in life are, somebody would suggest, whether they be club, spade, or diamond, always remember, never play without the heart. Caridad lived up to her name, love. And I am sure those of you who know her well, have experienced that love. But more than just love, there is something that was making her very strong. And you know what that was? Panindigan. I'd like to tell this story just as recently from the group of the Mary's Way. It tells a story of a race, an international race, a running race. And in that race, there was someone who was known as Abel Mutai, a runner who is from Kenya. And as they run, it was obvious he was going to win. He was about to finish it. He was about a few feet away. But the sun age of what she was looking at made this runner confused. He thought he had already finished the race, that the race was completed. In fact, he was still a few feet away from ending the race. Ivan Fernandez, a Spaniard behind him, realized the confusion of this runner from Kenya. So he shouted to him to push on, move on a few more feet to be able to reach the finish line. But Abel Butai, the Kenyan runner, did not understand Spanish. And she you know what this guy did, the Spaniard guy? He pushed Ivan, the Kenyan, to be able to make it to the finish line. He won the race. And during the interview, a journalist was asking this Spanish guy, the runner, and they said, why did you do that? You could have, run, you could have won the race. His response was, my dream is that someday we can have a kind of a community life where everybody recognizes each other despite of who we are. And then this, this interviewer said, but you let the Kenyan win. Kenyan win. And his response was, no, I did not let him win. He was going to win. And again, the journalist said, but you could have won the race. Ang sagot niya, listen to this. What would be the merit of such a kind of victory? What would be the honor of such a medal? And then he added this. This is a wonderful, and listen please, children of Caridad Morente Pineda. What would my mom think of that? 
what would my mom think of that? What Caridad has shown you in her life is a life na may panindigan. A life that is based on the love of her God. A life that is based in service in making that God known to others. A life that definitely speaks of the principles of a Christian. What would my mom think of winning in a manner that is not honorable? Someone says, we pass through this way but once, but if you have lived well, and if you have loved much, then once is enough. As we pray today for Caridad, we can ask her to pray for us that we may live the life abundantly that she had lived, that we may truly be based on our belief as Christians, a life that is loving, a life that desires to be of service, a life that asks to be blessed in order to be for others a blessing. Amen.